In this sound lesson, we are going to learn about speed of sound applications. These are learner sound come. In last lesson, we learned that sound takes time to travel over distance and that speed of sound is about 340 meters per second. And by knowing the speed of sound, there is quite a number of applications. One of them is knowing distance without physically measuring it. A simple application is actually estimating how far a lightning strike is away from you. All you need is the timing difference between when you see the lightning flash and when you hear the lightning thunder boom. How? Assuming that you see the flash immediately after the lightning strike, the time difference between the flash and the boom would be the time taken for the sound to travel the distance between you and the lightning. If the time difference is 1 second, it means that the lightning strike is about 340 meters away from you. It is because if the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, it will actually need 1 second to travel 340 meters. So, if the time difference is 2 seconds, the location where the lightning strike is about 680 meters away. The greater the distance, the longer the time difference. But that's assuming that we know the speed of sound and it is more or less constant. In general, the distance away is equal to the speed of sound times the time difference. Of course, we can't re cannot rely on this method to do accurate distance measurement. It's because we cannot anticipate the occurrence of lightning as we cannot predict when and where will the lightning strike. So, we need something that is within our control so that we can easily measure the time difference. We have to modify our method slightly and make use of the idea that sound can be reflected. The reflection of sound is known as echo. By finding the time difference between the start of the sound and when we detect the echo, we can actually calculate the required distance. Let me use a simulation to explain this idea. Okay, this is general setup. You have the wall that's over here and the speaker, and we want to find the distance between the wall and the speaker. So what we do is that we have a sensor that plays in the, uh, in the output of the speaker so that we can detect when the sound is out and the sound comes back again. So I want to pay attention to how uh, this thing looks like. Okay, so right now I'll give a pause realize that you will have something like this and when the sound reflects back you will register a pulse okay so also of course we can look at the pressure graph again so let's try again focus on the pressure graph it goes it hits the wall and it comes back and we try to register this so this I understand this time around we'll use a stopwatch okay let's try again goes and it takes roughly about 3.15 seconds to come back okay so let's just look at the distance okay it's roughly about 52 centimeter okay so let's see whether we use this time and we can arrive at this uh, distance Okay, so this is the setup that we saw just now. And assuming the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, and the general equation is the distance travel equals speed equal times time taken. So two times distance of to the wall, okay, because the distance travel is actually go here and come back. Okay, so it's two times distance of the wall multiplied by the speed times the time taken, which was 3.15 milliseconds. So convert it into seconds and you obtain that it is 1.071 uh, meters but the distance of wall is actually remember it's two times this distance so we need to divide it by two and it is roughly about 0.53 uh, 55 meters which is 53.55 centimeter so it's pretty close to 52 centimeter 52.5 so similarly we can apply this idea to measure the distance of places that's inaccessible for example, we can measure the depth of sea floor without divers or submarine. We can do this by sending ultrasound wave towards the sea floor and let it bounce off the seabed and measure the time for the echo to come back. 
But do take note that in this situation of finding depth of the seabed, the speed of sound in water is 1,500 meters per second and not 340 meters per second. So again, assuming the speed of sound is constant uh, and this particle general formula time is taken, so we apply this particle formula is that it is instead of the distance to the wall is that, and this is the, the event. And of course we can, an alternate formula is that you just shift the two below and shift it out. Okay. So another way to interpret is that the depth is actually the half the time taken down the speed of sound and medium. So a simple example. Okay, uh, what you need to know is that uh, right now, uh, instead of calculating the depth, we calculate the time difference. So um, if the depth of the sea is 250 meters per sec uh, meters, uh, how, what is the depth, what is the time difference that will be uh, of the echo? So by applying the formula, just put in the numbers, 2,250 meters and uh, the speed of sound in water is 1005. So by calculating, you should be able to calculate the time difference will be 3.0 seconds. Besides finding seabed, this idea is also extended and applied to submarines, sonar, and air tower control radars. And by measuring the time difference between the original pulse and the echo, submarine is able to navigate deep water, underwater and locate enemy ships. So similarly, Air traffic radar is able to obtain important information about surrounding airplanes such as distance and location from the airport, speed and di direction of travel to help them coordinate takeoffs and landing safely. We may have our design inspiration coming from nature as some animals also use this echo technique. Bats and dolphins emit high speed sound to navigate their surroundings and to hunt for food. But note that ultra, uh, sonar actually use ultrasound waves but radar use the reflection of radio waves. And radio wave is actually part of electromagnetic spectrum and is a cousin of visible light. One point to take note of is that radio waves are not actually sound waves. Next, ultrasound scan. Not only for long distance, echo can be used to apply to measure very short distance too. It is used in ultrasound scan to help doctors look at our body without surgery. For example, checking the status of a baby in a mother's womb. Like this. The idea is the same as the ultrasound takes different timing to bounce back as the doctor scans different parts of the baby. By gathering the different timing information, the computers in the scanner is able to generate an image of the baby in the womb. Ultrasound scans are also generally safer as it is sound, which is actually a form of vibration. There is actually no radiation unlike x-rays, which is very harmful for the baby in the womb. That's the end of today's lesson. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.